we need to think of a new advert for freebets.com. Get your best betting offers from freebets.com. Yeah, that'll do. The following deals are now live. This is Matt for Boxing Social in association with freebets.com, Forge Irish Stout and Ready to Fight. We are here, Mohammed Samir. Mohammed, I appreciate you giving us some of your time. Um, first off, how are we? How's things? All good, man. I'm just in camp at the moment, um, getting ready for my next fight, which is on the 27th of January. Just under two weeks left now. Um, I'm just ready to go, man. Literally, like, I just, I just want to fight. Um, but yeah, everything's good. I was just about to say, um, you've got to fight your call, 27 for Jan, but 2023 was uh, probably a frustrating year for you. You know, you've been out on the sidelines for a while now. I think you fought in over a year. And um, just talk to me a little bit about last year and some of the obstacles that were in your way. Oh, man. Yeah, like, yeah, last year was just. Uh... How do I explain it? It was, to, to be honest with you, thinking back to it now, it it did uh, grow my character. It taught me a lot of things. It was frustrating, but it was also like a test to test my patience to see if I'm actually made for this. So at the start of 2023, I had a hand injury, recovered from that, was ready to go. I had a fight booked for June, cancelled. Then it got moved to July, cancelled. Um, September cancelled and then November I actually caught um, COVID and then I couldn't fight so I, they cancelled that too and I was just honestly like the work I put in and everything and not getting to fight it was just yeah it was it, was a, it, it wasn't a good time um, but honestly I just believe God's, God's got a plan for me and mm -hmm. he's done this on purpose do you know what I mean to like grow my um, character uh, make me a stronger person mentally. Uh, so I was going to say, yeah. in, in terms of um, creating a, a stronger mindset, do you think that's going to benefit you as you sort of progress? Because boxing, as we all know, it's a bit of a roller coaster. Like you mentioned there, you have a fight planned in, you get COVID. Um, there's many fighters who train for eight weeks, fighters pull out, um, and then it can feel like you've not, you know, you've done it for almost for nothing. Sometimes is that sort of you think what you've been through will benefit you as your career progresses? 100%. Because it's taught me patience. Do you know what I mean? It's taught me patience. It's like, when I was younger, if, if something like that would have happened, I would have been like, ah, that's it. I've had enough. Can't be asked for this. Do you know what I mean? And all that kind of stuff. But um, as I'm maturing and getting older, like, it's just taught me, like, whatever life throws at you, you just got to just gotta take it and keep moving. Keep moving forward. Do you know what I mean? Because nothing's going to stop, let's be honest. Like me complaining and being negative, that ain't going to make the world stop. <laughs> Everything's going to carry on the way it's going. So it's one of them things Like I've just learned. Like, whatever life hits me with, um, just got to carry on. Do you know what I mean? It's okay to be, you know, sad for a little bit or whatever. You know, you be that's fine. That's normal. You're a human at the end of the day. But then you've got to just get up and just get things done, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's definitely made me stronger mentally, definitely. you back out um, next next week, but what type of performance can we expect from you? Obviously, there's always been that old adage of um, you got to shake the ring rust off and things like that, but I'm sure, like I'm saying, I'm sure you're raring to go, firing on all cylinders behind the scenes. Um, what type of performance um, are we going to be able to expect from you? So, uh, um, to be honest with you, mate, like I can't explain like just the the energy that's going through me right now. Um, I'm just ready to like just, just let out all violence. Do you know what I mean? As mad as that sounds, like I'm just ready to go. Like I'm ready to like, because I'm in this sport like to to fight. Do you know what I mean? I'm I'm here to fight. I'm here to do damage. And I know that, that might sound crazy to the, the average person, but that's that's literally that's what's going through my mind. Like I need to go there and do a job because it's all good speaking and saying, oh, I could do this, I could do that. But let's see. Let's see if you can actually do it. Do you know what I mean? So I'm coming in there to, like, you know, take this guy out, to be honest with you. Like, I know people say ring rust and all that kind of stuff, but 
I also believe it is a mental strength. Like if you believe something, you could do something, then it's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm coming. I'm I'm coming. What's up here about for you then, in terms of what you hope to achieve by sort of the end of December this year? Is it about just getting that activity back up? You know, four or five fights, and you know, making sure that you're as sharp as possible before you start looking at now then looking at titles and moving your way up your rankings. What is this year about for you? So I'd say that the first step back um, is 27th of January. And then uh, I just want to stay busy, man. Like my whole pro career has always been stop, start, stop, start. Um, do you know what? I remember you from somewhere. I fought on an MTK show. Huh. And I remember I was very nervous. And then I, uh, you would have uh, interviewed me and I was yeah. quite nervous to do an interview and yeah, um, you just way out of me, do you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah so this year, it's sort of behind the gloves. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember that, We're behind the gloves. Who was main event in that show? Uh, who was it? Was it Bolton? Oh my days. Bolton, Bolton, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, wicked. But yeah, this year is all about just staying busy, just getting the fights and whatever, and then whatever my team wants to do, for example, like go for a title towards the end of the year or whatever, I'm ready. I'm ready. Like, I'm not someone that will turn down fights or, do you know what I mean, anything like that. But I do want to just get busy, man, just get back fighting again, and that's it. Well, domestically, in terms of like middleweight, especially, there's so many names flying round. I mean, and it's an up and down roller coaster. You know, a lot of them fighting each other. I mean, you look at, I think, uh, this oh, week, yeah. like Linus Udofia going in there, um, with Aaron McKenna. You're looking at, you know, look at look at the likes of Denzel Bentley just lost in there. And he, there's so many like names. Once you start getting that activity, have you got an idea of you know the type of fighter you want? Because you've been on big shows before. You know, have you got an idea of what who, the type of name you want? So, um, I will be fighting at uh, 154. All right, yeah. Yeah, so I'm moving down. I'm moving to 154. Um, my next fight will be at middleweight, but we will be moving down to 154. And then, as I said, just this year is all about just finishing that apprenticeship off. And then next year is all guns blazing. You know, I'm I'm ready to fight. Like whatever they put in front of me, I'm, I'm ready to go. Um, I have been on a few big shows now, so you know, um, I'm used to that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, it's it's. I don't I don't want to start saying names right now, but um, because as I said, like I've got to earn my stripes before I start talking. Do you know what I mean? Start talking names and stuff like that. Um. As much as I'm a confident fighter, I try to stay humble. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but yeah, like whatever's in my way, like I'm taking it down. Put it like that. Like, whatever's in my way. You've been on big shows before. You mentioned there. I think you were on the undercard of um, Kid um, Maxi Hughes, Kid Galahad. So you had that experience as well at Nottingham. Is that like a big thing for you? You want to sort of, you know, um, sort of map a route out where you're back on one of them big promotional shows where you can push your name out there a little bit more because you'll have aspirations of not just picking up titles domestically, but moving on to European world level. Oh, 100%. Like, um, getting onto big shows like that is is something that's obviously in my mind. And uh, if I didn't think I would, like, get to world level, I wouldn't be doing it. Like, this sport is it's a tough sport. you got to give it everything. Uh, for example, like, I'm travelling from Peterborough to London every day on the train that I do that trip there and back every single day. And uh -huh. I do that because I want to get like the best out of me. Like being in Peterborough, obviously that I'm the only current professional boxer. So there's not much opportunity there and stuff. So um, coming down to London, like training alongside uh, the British champion, Isaac Cham Chamberlain, people yeah. like that, you know, they, they really like push me, you know, and seeing someone train like when, when Isaac's training he's training for like 12 round fights and stuff and then if I'm training alongside him right now you know that's that experience you can't get and then I've got you know uh, coaches that really care about me and they're dedicated because 
they want champions, so they're hungry. They've got that hunger too. Um, and yeah, I've got a wicked team, but as I said, if I didn't believe I could get to that level, I don't think I'd be doing it. Is the um is the British title important to you? These domestic titles that you you know people say are like the the first sort of milestone in people's careers are all these are all these titles like the domestic scene are they how how important is it for you to be going and challenging for them and winning obviously? Oh, a hundred percent! Like I definitely want to win uh, a British champion, a uh, British title, inshallah, because um, it's it's in the UK like that's the title that's you know. Aye. How do I explain it? How do I say it? Um, that's sort of like your apprenticeship to see if you'll move on to the next level because as you grow it, as you're going through, you see these fights where you're supposed to win, and then as you sort of you're moving up to that level, your English, your you know Commonwealth British, that's then are you going to make that next step? Because the fights for the British tend to be, you know, quite quite closer than some of the fights maybe that you'd have had before. Is that how you probably think? Yeah, definitely. I'd agree with that, hundred um, percent. So yeah, as as you said, like that's an important belt to win, um, and as you said, that's a way to finish the apprenticeship in the UK. Well, like you said, if you're gonna drop down to 154, there's still like you mentioned. Look at that now. Look Sam Anto is done, and um, with his yeah. career, he's there kicking on now. I think he's been announced in a big fight as well coming up. Um, I believe so. Like I said, you the so the world's your oyster. There's always big names knocking about, you know, within a few pounds of each other as well. Right now, mm. who, who's your favorite aside from yourself? Obviously, in terms of like world level, 154 pounders. Who's the one for you? Who's who? Who do you think's number one in the world right now? Who's your favorite? What my favorite fighter? You rate as number one right now, 154 pound division. Obviously, Jamel Charlo. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's still king of the division uh, because he's still got his titles, hasn't he? Or has he vacated? I'm not sure. I can't remember, but what do you make of the likes of, obviously, like a Tim Zhu um, and, and things like that? And obviously, you've got Jim, JJ Metcalf, um, who's obviously holding on to an IBO title at the minute. There's, you don't, what, do you, what do you make of these fighters? There's a lot of talk about Tim Zhu and things like that as well. Yeah, good fighters, you know, good, strong fighters. Um, obviously, at the current moment, they're a few levels ahead. But, um, yeah, I enjoy watching um, Tim Zhu, actually. Uh, I like his style. I like the way, you know, he fights and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But as I said, like, in the 154 division, there's not many, many fighters. Um, but, uh, yeah, I... Currently, like if you think about it, there's only yeah Tim Zhu, Jamel Charlo. Does Tim Zhu? Well, Tim Zhu is he holding like three titles at the moment? Tim Zhu's holding Tim... the WBO world, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and yeah. Then, uh, IBF is uh, Jamel WBA. See Jamel Jamel as well. Yeah. As I said, there's there's good fighters in the division, but um, you know the goal remains the same. You know, get to the top and take everyone out. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. It's gonna be interesting. We wish you luck on your comeback. Obviously, you've been out of the ring a long time, so um, obviously a bit of weight off your shoulders now. You can finally sort of you know, have that feeling of a fight week and getting in there and 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 really doing your thing because it's um it's a hard sport and when you're not Maybe you know work having that ink coming in as well. It can be it can be a very lonely place. So look, we wish you well coming back and um appreciate you jumping on Boxing Social with us. Honestly, mate, thank you very much for the time and thank you for the platform. No um, yeah, man, appreciate it. No worries. Um, look, man, I mean, um, we'll catch up soon. Good luck for next week, and yeah, hopefully we can get on a call afterwards. Yeah, definitely. Nice one, mate. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.
we need to think of a new advert for freebets.com. Get your best betting offers from freebets.com. Yeah, that'll do. The following deals are now live.